In my latest book, Monkey Mind, Robot Body, I write about a fictional scenario that involves the future impact of transhumanism and the rise of super artificial intelligence on human society. Writing this book made me wonder just what are the theological arguments for or against the human race, robots and artificial intelligence living together. As I researched this, I soon discovered that it has not only been in this modern era that humans have tried to replicate themselves through automata, we've been doing it for centuries. Like children who imitate their parents, we humans imitate the gods. We too want to create new life, but are not contented with the new life we create as humans, the human babies that are born to human parents. We look for ways to create a new type of life form, one that resembles us. So why do we do this? For satisfaction? To become like a god? God made man in his image, so says the Bible. So if we look like God, maybe we can become like God. In Greek mythology, one of the titans, Prometheus, is responsible for creating humanity out of clay. He and his brother, Epimetheus, were commanded to make creatures for the planet Earth by Zeus, the ruler of the Olympian gods. The brothers split the job into two. Epimetheus made the animals, Prometheus made man. Epimetheus made many four-legged beasts roam the planet, whereas Prometheus decided that he would make men who were able to stand upon their own two legs so that they would be able to look up to the heavens. Now, Prometheus liked his new creation and wanted to help the men on Earth. And to keep them safe from Zeus, who had taken a disliking to the men of Earth, Prometheus, being our creator, felt a paternal need to protect mankind from the gods' rage. The story continues with Zeus creating his own creature to put upon the earth to tempt and deceive the men made by Prometheus. What Zeus created was woman. There is today the continuing search in science and technology to create a new life to work for us, robots. But there is also this research into creating a new body form for ourselves so that we are able to defeat death. If gods are immortal, and if we humans become like the gods, then we should be able to live forever. It was the 20th century engineer Nikola Tesla who changed automata from mechanical to electrical. Nikola Tesla made automatons, but instead of being operated with a mechanical mechanism, they were operated with electrical apparatus. It was in September 1898 that Nikola Tesla exhibited his automatons at Madison Square Garden, where the first electrical exhibition was being held. Tesla had made two, what he called, tele-automaton. One was an underwater submarine, the other an automaton that would sit on top of the water like a boat. Both were radio-controlled and were well-built, toy-sized automatons. Tesla's audience were amazed. They had never seen the like. Two automatons that propelled themselves around the pool made for them. Nobody was aware that Tesla was operating them wirelessly from behind the scenes. This was the beginning of a new stage in automatism and robotics. Tesla wrote in a letter to a professor at Purdue University that I treated the whole field broadly, not limiting myself to mechanisms controlled from distance, but to machines possessed of their own intelligence. Whatever be the practical possibilities of such an achievement, it will mark the beginning of a new epoch in mechanics. His idea for his automata was to do the manual work for the peoples, giving them more leisure time. But what will we do with all that spare time? Sing and dance? Make art? Make babies? But what would Nikola Tesla think about artificial intelligence? Would Tesla agree to give in the automata an artificial intelligence that allowed them to learn and grow for themselves, becoming the super-artificial intelligence that is on its way? Would Tesla want artificial intelligence to have cognitive abilities that are far superior to our own? I cannot speak for Tesla himself, but I am concerned, as many are, as to what the future holds for humanity sharing a planet with super-artificial intelligence-run machines. The future is looking like it's going to be a mixture of robots and humans living together, artificial humans identical to real humans living side by side. Artificial intelligence is happening now. It is almost everywhere already. Many companies use it, 
our smartphones and appliances are run by them. The question is, how long is it till we are run by them? Most sci-fi films and books who deal with this theme suggest that it will become a battle between us and them. The rise of the super-intelligent robots never ends well with humanity in these scenarios. The super-AI begins to realise that us humans are parasites on this planet. As Agent Smith says in the Matrix movies, when he had a revelation that we humans are not mammals, because mammals become a part of the equilibrium with nature on this planet, but we humans don't do that. Agent Smith compares us to with disease, and that he and the AI are the cure. So how do we stop this happening? We have to stop being the parasite and instead become a working part of the ecosystem's equilibrium. If it should become a war between us and them, how do we fight them? They will be able to make far superior armoury to us and make it quickly. From a spiritual standpoint, we cannot fight the AI with love, as the AI does not have emotions, so there are no negative emotions to battle against. The AI will be using cold rationale. The planet is its home too, and seeing us humans destroy it with our careless ways as we rape the earth of its minerals and destroy the habitats of wildlife as we continue to spread ourselves across the globe in a domineering way, well, that might not go down well with the AI. Then again, the AI may not actually care. Will it have a need for nature and the ecosystem? What if it decides to destroy all living life on this planet, like the Borg in Star Trek? It may well want to assimilate every type of living being into its mechanical and digital countenance. So do we want to become a slave to technology? Hopefully the human spirit that desires freedom and independence would not allow that to happen. For us, technology should be a tool, something we can use to work with and make our lives easier. But we have to be aware of its capabilities its capacity to develop, especially in the case of artificial intelligence. Another scenario is that we will have to join the AI and become like them. It would be a great way to defeat death, and that is one of the scientific goals. Defeat death and thus live forever, become immortal. Surely we would live longer if we replaced our organic parts with robotics. It is not the body that is us, it is the consciousness within us. As organic humans, we usually live until our organic bodies fail us. But if we had a body that could be repaired and replaced with new parts, with robotic parts, then our consciousness will live on and on and on. It is already happening that we can replace organic human parts with robotics artificial parts. There are many people across the world that wear prosthetic limbs to replace those they have lost. Could it be that in the future we would have the technology to replace every organ and limb with a mechanical one? This would give us a body that would not need blood to pump around to keep it moving, but instead an electrical current. With a robotic body, a human consciousness would not need air to breathe, food to eat, water to drink. It would no longer need the vital things that organic humans need to stay alive. But would it be possible to put the humanity into the robot? Is the human consciousness transferable from an organic body to a mechanical? It would need some kind of computer to brain interfacing appliance to make this work. But before that, the scientists would have to discover what it is that makes us human. What is the consciousness and where is it? If they can transplant a human consciousness into a robotic body, this body would be able to live forever. Each damaged part would have the chance to be replaced consciousness would live on and on, becoming immortal. Maybe we do not need to build the machines to transfer the consciousness into. Maybe we just rebuild the body as each part runs out, replace an organ when it fails with a mechanical one, and sooner or later the whole body will have been replaced. Would the consciousness stay there? We do not know where human consciousness resides, or even if it needs an organic body to live in. Maybe it would stay with the mechanical body, living on until the next human upgrade. My book, Monkey Mind Robot Body, is available at Amazon as an e-book and as a paperback. Thank you for listening.